This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at configuring preferred bridgehead servers and modifying the schedule of the ISTG, the Intersight Topology Generator. As we've discussed, bridgehead servers are responsible for communicating uh, across network connections that are uh, represented by site links. So doing inter-site replication is always between bridgehead servers. It's an automatic process, but there may be some cases where you want to set preferred bridgehead servers. Let's take a look here at that option. This is in Active Directory Sites and Services. We can view who the current ISTG is on the NTDS site settings. Okay, so on the site settings object, you would see that the intersite topology generator for the Tampa site was KADC1, just the, the first server. If you want to change the schedule at which it updates, you can. It's, it's by default once per hour. There's not really a, necessarily a reason to change that. Now you can go down to the actual transport itself and go to the properties. Oh, excuse me wrong place. We need to go to the properties of the server. If you have a server that you want to be considered as a preferred bridgehead server, we'll go to the properties of that server. And then notice down here it says transports available for intersite data transfer. And these are the transports. And then it says this server is a preferred bridgehead for the following transport. So we would click IP and hit add. Notice you can't make a machine a preferred bridgehead server for an individual link. You can only do this for uh, the server as a whole. It's now the preferred bridgehead for that entire site, for all intersite communication. And as we discussed, if we have them, we should always put two uh, because that way we're, we make sure that we have some level of fault tolerance. So that's the process of creating preferred bridgehead servers. It's really just a, a quick modification that will get it done. Now, earlier I had mistakenly clicked here, but kind of thinking about our site link bridges and, and uh, the transferring or transitive nature of site links. And so it's here on the properties of the transport that that checkbox is, bridge all site links, that we've just been discussing, that in many situations we might want to uncheck that. If we want to uncheck that, or if we do uncheck that, then that stops what the KCC will do by default, and that's consider these site links as transitive. We could then go and create a new site link bridge. We'll just call this bridge test, and we say that these are the site links that this is bridging together. Okay? Uh, these are the two that are included. Now, obviously, in our situation, that would not be required, but the only time that you're going to ever disable the bridging of site links is typically in a larger or more complex network environment. And so we would have lots of sites, some of which may be bridged and some of which may be not. So anyway, I wanted to show you that on the screen as well. But the primary purpose of this demonstration was to look at how to modify the ISTG, the Intersite Topology Generator, and configure preferred bridgehead servers. 